Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and this is Apple's new flagship phone for the next year, the iPhone 6. So there's a new design this year for Apple's flagship, and of course the theme here is thin and light. This phone is 6.9 millimeters thin, and it's all one piece of aluminum rounded off at the corners. Uh, so instead of having the squared off edges like the last iPhone, Apple's rounded off the sides. The phone feels a lot more like the HTC One M8 now, and this has two effects. The first is that it gives the whole body this seamless feel. If you start your finger on the screen and drag it all the way around to the back of the phone, you won't encounter any seams. It's just one smooth surface. But two is that since it's so smooth, it's actually a bit slippery to hold. Plus it's a little bigger and it's so light that my confidence actually holding and manipulating this phone in the hand is dropping every time. But part of me wants to put a case on it, but you guys know how I feel about cases so a high quality skin will suit me just fine. And of course, dbrand has a couple of badass skins for the iPhone 6 to help out this grip ability. So I'll leave links to those right below the like button if you wanna check those out, highly recommended. But the rest of the build of this phone is definitely awesome. It's a bit bigger than the last iPhone, but I think it's a much better size now. And you only take a few minutes to get used to it before you look back at the iPhone 5S and it starts to look like a toy. Uh, it's obviously a bit bigger than other phones with a 4.7 inch display since this one has a big old chin for the home button and a big forehead to match. But what's more striking than its size is I think the thinness. Again, 6.9 millimeters, that is crazy thin. Almost feels too thin and light to be a working phone. It feels almost the same weight as the dummy phone. Uh, it's so thin in fact that the camera lens on the back protrudes out a bit. Now this turns out to be not a huge deal since it's coated in sapphire anyway and it just rocks a bit when it's placed on a flat surface, but that's minor. Uh, so this is the first iPhone to move the power button from the top to the side of the phone. And that's good. That's what other bigger phones have been doing for years. Uh, and that's much easier to reach. And also it has a physical mute switch and I think that's a nice touch. Most phones don't do this yet, but it sometimes got switched off in my pocket every once in a while, but I like the physical mute button. So I have a few mixed feelings overall about the build of the phone since it's so razor thin, but it's definitely built well. It shouldn't bend in your pocket or anything. Actually, I think the worst quirk about the hardware is the speaker on the bottom. It's a, a pretty loud speaker. I mean, it's got decent mids and highs and it's a little bit tinny, but the thing is it's a small downward facing driver. So it's really easy to accidentally block it when you're holding the phone, watching a video or playing a game. Now I know the elephant in the room right now is the iPhone 6 Plus, which is the companion 5.5 inch iPhone that Apple released alongside the iPhone 6 a couple of weeks ago. And basically my opinion on that is this, I'm gonna review it separately in a completely different video and that's upcoming. But if you're trying to decide between the 6 and the 6 Plus, consider this. All of the factors that make the iPhone 6 a little bit slippery and a little bit difficult to hold in the hand are amplified on the iPhone 6 Plus. It's an even bigger phone in every single way and it's still rounded on the edges, so it's even more difficult to grip. The easiest way to see this is to go into an Apple store and hold one, but trust me, the 6 Plus is huge. So really besides improved internals, the main physical advantage to this iPhone 6 over an older iPhone is the size. It's a bigger screen and it has all the advantages that naturally come with having that bigger screen. So bigger icons, bigger UI, bigger text, bigger web browsing, bigger gaming, bigger video watching, bigger keyboard. Uh, but what's funny is it stops there. So the iPhone 6 has a 4.7 inch 1334 by 750 IPS display with awesome colors and great brightness and incredible viewing angles uh, and a pretty high pixel density, 326 PPI makes it the same as the iPhone 5 and 5S. And iOS 8 is trained to take advantage of every inch of this display by basically scaling everything up from the iPhone 5S. But like I said, there aren't really any extra features in iOS to take advantage of the larger display. So there are no multitasking features or anything extra. Uh, there is Apple's interestingly implemented reachability, uh, which is basically to make one-handed use easier. So you can double touch the home button to move the UI halfway down the display so you can interact with the top half of stuff. I sometimes use this to reach those top corner buttons in apps or pull down the notification bar when I'm feeling lazy, but yeah, that's about it as far as Apple's extra features for a big screen go. Again, it's a great display. I just, I guess I wish they just did more to take advantage of it. Maybe show more apps in the multitasking menu, uh, make touch targets bigger in first party apps, things like that. They don't have to force anything, but I just wish they did a bit more with all those extra pixels. But the rest of iOS 8 is very familiar to anyone who's ever used an iPhone or an iPad before. I really don't have to explain that. You have some improvements to the notification area. So now you can add widgets uh, just to the notification area that stay there and permanently show information. So you can get more apps 
from the App Store to fill up this panel with different widgets that show info. And you can you can kind of mess around with these and get shortcuts and real-time stats and info and stuff, and that's nice. Uh, but you can only have them, like I said, in this Today section of your notification panel. But overall, you have a nice layer of gloss over the top of a very familiar user interface. It's prettied up with this gloss and reflections all over the place. I still like iOS a lot, even though it's a bit restricted in terms of where I can share to and how I can get into Google services, but it seems like every new version, there's a flash of something that makes the OS a little more appealing. Speaking of flash, uh, there's a highlight of the new iPhone, and that is the camera on the back. Actually, the camera is always a highlight of the new iPhone, but that doesn't mean we should take it for granted. The iPhone 6 has a great camera, one of the best and one of the fastest in any smartphone. I think that's a key word here towards making the camera so great. It's extremely fast. So user your interface is fast. Taking a picture is really, really fast. Uh, it can take high frame rate fast video at 30, 60, or 720p, even 240 frames per second. Uh, it has fast autofocus with this new technology. It has a fast wide open aperture glass for great low light performance. Uh, now it's still an eight megapixel camera, but on that one third inch sensor, it's kind of like a hybrid between HTC's massive ultra pixels and Samsung's cramming as many pixels as possible mentalities. Maybe this is the middle ground that we were asking HTC to take all along. Uh, all the photos it takes are very clean. Uh, the camera tends to have a bias towards a faster shutter speed, kind of like the OnePlus One, to avoid blurriness. So it's willing to crank up the ISO and just trust its top-notch image processing to clean things up. And that's really where it's separated. It has great image processing. And this does a pretty good job of cleaning up noise, which makes some crispy, clean shots uh, with excellent color. The only downside of this camera, I would say, is the fact that it's only eight megapixels, which means no 4K video. 4K is actually 8.3 megapixels. So this eight megapixel sensor means this iPhone will not shoot 4K video uh, until the next one. So overall, like I said before, this whole phone is a very familiar phone, a safe upgrade for previous iPhone users for sure. Uh, if you just straight up look at the numbers, you'll see a 1.4 gigahertz dual core chip and one gig of RAM. But the thing performs like any other phone with a 2.5 gigahertz chip and three gigs of RAM. So you can thank Apple's vertical integration and the awesome A8 chip for that. Uh, so with the iPhone 6, you're getting a great performer, a great camera, a great display, and a great design all in a super thin package. So with a super thin phone, you also get a super thin battery. So the iPhone 6 is rocking a 1,810 milliamp hour battery. On paper, that's really small, and you might consider that super small by other phone standards, by Android phone standards, by other flagship standards, by other 4.7 inch phone standards, but Apple has the advantage of at least it owns that A8 chip, it has iOS under control, everything is optimized to give it the longest battery life possible. So I would summarize by saying it has about 10 to 15% better battery life than the iPhone 5S. It's not amazingly great, but it's not bad. It has the advantage of having a really good standby time. So if you don't use it a lot during the day or if you have a light usage day, you'll probably make it throughout the day not having any problems. Uh, you can go to sleep with 100% battery, forget to charge it and wake up with 98%, so that's great. But on a heavy day, if you're doing a lot of web browsing, a lot of photo and video taking, a lot of video watching, a lot of gaming, if you're doing a lot of stuff where the screen on time is high during that day, you're probably not going to make it to the end of the day, and you're gonna have to go find a charger before the day is out. Uh, this is not different from the iPhone 5S, this is just something that comes with having a small, thin phone, and Apple's totally fine with making that sacrifice. I just wish the phone was a little bit thicker so they could fit maybe a 2000 or 2100 milliamp hour battery. And that would make the phone, yes, a little bigger, but it would get rid of the camera protrusion and might make it a little bit easier to hold. But that's all stuff I've said before. But look, there's one more thing. iOS isn't perfect. There are hiccups sometimes. There are bugs sometimes. There was that 8.0.1 update that freaking bricked the phone, but they quickly fixed that. But this is the first time in a while that I've seen a significant lag in major developers getting their apps updated to iOS 8 on this bigger iPhone, especially the 6 and the 6 Plus. Apps that haven't been updated for this larger display look big and awkward and fuzzy and strange. And I hope devs get on that to fix their apps. And then, and only then, I will have basically nothing except the battery to complain about in the iPhone 6. So solid phone, Apple. So my overall final verdict, uh, obviously as a heavy Google service user, a uh, Google Plus user, a YouTube user, a Gmail user, Google Tasks, Google Keep, Google Calendar, all these things, uh, iOS 8 and iPhones aren't my first choice, obviously. 
Uh, but my choice of iPhone is also not the iPhone 6. It's the iPhone 6 Plus. Uh, and I'll be talking more about why the iPhone 6 Plus is my iPhone of choice uh, in that full review video. But for right now, the iPhone 6 is a safe step forward. It's a, it's a definite upgrade from the last iPhone. But like I said, not a mandatory upgrade. So stay tuned for that 6 Plus review video and many more forward videos to come. Thank you for watching this one. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.